And that messenger bypass is going through an area of forest. It will actually be going through a, a roosting area of the long-tail bats. The Alliance has actually agreed to do about 3,500 hectares of pest management control. We want to make sure that the Mount Messenger Bypass project leaves a really positive legacy for the environment. We're trying to bring back the Māori, the naturalness to that area. The native bat that's present is the long-tailed bat, which is a nationally critical threatened species. So we need to design pest control in terms of where it's located and when we do it so that it provides those bats with the best possible protection. Work that's been done in other populations of long-tailed bats indicates that if you don't have pest management, a good effective control of the pests in an area with long-tailed bats, the population will decline by something like 10% per annum. So we need to make sure that those roost areas have a good buffer of pest control around them and that the pest control is timed and designed to protect bats when they're most vulnerable to make sure that the, the overall outcome for native bats in the area is a positive one. The bat program involves surveying the area with automatic recording bat detectors that we can leave out in the field for a couple of weeks. The bat echolocation calls are a higher frequency than what we can hear, so the automated acoustic bat monitors record bat activity. Uh, as they fly past. The detectors actually record the ultrasound so we have a good idea of the numbers of bats working in an area. And we use that to uh, determine where our trapping sites are going to be. It's not just confined to a small area, it's, it's quite, quite a wide, quite a wide area. This project is very, very exciting in, in the way that the land where they're doing the bat surveys is, is, is a part of our ancestral draw here. What's challenging about the bat work is um, learning about their behaviour and, and, and their, their movements. I do believe that long-tailed bats, which is the bat species we work on, is probably the most difficult uh, species of all New Zealand species. It's probably the most difficult one to catch. Which means catching them with specially designed traps. We attach small transmitters to them, which we can detect with radio tracking equipment, but getting line of sight in a, in a hilly environment with deep valleys and, and steep cliffs is really difficult. So we are using a UAV or a drone to uh, fly over uh, the hillside, the uh, rough hillside to uh, locate a bat or a series of bats. seen the aerial or it's, it's uh, called a yagi, a blue frame that's hanging underneath and that helps us to locate that, that bat a lot faster than what you would on foot. So it's a very quick way for us to scan an area very quickly once we've located the catchment and the valley where the, where the bat is uh, located then we get, give a general location of where that is. We hand that location over to the field team and they go in by foot. We've found that it's been incredibly effective at allowing us to locate the bats before we send people in. So from a health and safety perspective, it really helps. It's incredibly useful and a really fantastic innovation. A normal day would have been getting up pretty much half past four in the morning and going down and checking the, 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 the nets to see if there's any bats in them. And then after that, checking out the bat recorders. I think the rest of the team were out tracking the bats that had transmitters on them. You're essentially following around a beep with your radio tracking equipment and they can lead you anywhere and roads and tracks don't necessarily go there and there can be cliffs and mountains in the way. So it is very challenging to work in that landscape. We're just trying to keep tabs on the roost that the radio tag bats use. And during the breeding season we can find the maternity roosts which are typically the most important roosts in the landscape and we want to make sure that those are the roosts that we find and protect. It's been quite hard to catch bats. They did some trapping up behind our yeah. urupa before they went up there I thought they're going to be successful there and they were and that says to me that the old people are there helping. Well that's a great feeling.
Well, the strengths of the program really are the people that we have on board. We've got great support from the Mount Messenger Alliance, the Transport Agency. Quite a diverse bunch of people from all over the country and quite a few different ecologists and experts in the different fields. It was good to get to know them. I got involved in ecology because I want to help with conservation of New Zealand's native animals. Not a lot of people know about New Zealand's native bats. They're the, a really high-tech species. Bats are small and not much bigger than a, a, an adult's thumb. Wingspan of about 20 centimetres across. If they don't get eaten, they will live for 30 to 40 years. Absolutely fascinating animals. We're part way through the program. Um, we've been radio tracking three bats that have led us to five roosts that we've confirmed are maternity roosts. I love this project because it's a really challenging project. I think as a consultant you look for, for challenges. For Ngāti Tama, being a part of the bat project is regaining our kaitiaki tanga. I'm involved with the bat program because it's, it's within Ngāti Tama Rohe and I'm Ngāti Tama. I, see myself as kaitiaki of the, the area. On projects like this I find it aligns very closely with the, the goals of the project team around no net loss, ideally a net, net gain for biodiversity. Mm -hmm.